Okay, good evening, everyone. It's, uh, I would like to call the City of Maple Heights Planning and Zoning Public Hearing to order for Monday, July 21st at 633. Can you read the roll, please? I can. Arnold. Present. Ikeneshi. Present. Ostensen. Present. Shannon. Present. Weber. Present. This public hearing was called according to section 1262.13 of the codified ordinances of the city of Maple Heights. If you are an applicant, please remain present until you are called during the regular meeting, which begins after the public hearing, to explain your application. The public hearing is to permit the public to speak in opposition or in favor of an applicant's case. Can you read the first case? Sure. 2014 PZ09, an application from Robert Mangan, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, for zoning approval to allow a carport incidental to an accessory permitted use in the rear yard of a corner lot at property located at 14520 Corridan Avenue in the city of Maple Heights, Ohio. Okay, are there any proponents for case 2014 PZ09? Any proponents for case 2014 PZ09? Any proponents for case 2014 PZ09? There are any opponents for case 2014 PZ09? Any opponents for case 2014 PZ09? Any opponents for case 2014 PZ09? Okay, are you going to Sure. 2014 PZ10, an application from Musa Jundi for planning approval of a conditional use permit to operate a fast food restaurant in a neighborhood commercial district at 5328 Warrensville Center Road in the city of Maple Heights, Ohio. Are there any proponents for case 2014 PZ10? Any proponents for case 2014 PZ10? Any proponents for case 2014 PZ10? Any opponents for case 2014 PZ10? Any opponents for case 2014 PZ10? Any opponents for case 2014 PZ10? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed at 6.35 p.m. I'd like to call the public meeting for the City of Maple Heights Planning and Zoning Commission for Monday, July 21st, 2014 to order at 6.35 p.m. Can you call the roll, please? Sure. Arnold. Present. Yeki and Yeshi. Present. Ostensen. Present. Shunnick. Present. Weber. Present. First thing we have are the minutes from the June 9th, 2014 meeting. Uh, we had one amendment during our caucus meeting on case 2014-04. There's no, nothing else then. I would like to make a motion that we approve the minutes for the June 9th, 2014 meeting. Second. Can you call the roll, please? Sure. Arnold? Yes. Deacon Yeshi? Yes. Ostensen? Yes. Shenick? Yes. Weber? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to now make a motion to extend the hearing date for case number P, case number 2014 PZ04 from June 13th, 2014 to July 21st, 2014. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. second. You want to roll? Sure. Extend the, extend the hearing date. Arnold? Yes. Deacon Yeshi? No. Ostensen? Yes. Shedd? Yes. Weber? Yes. Okay. Can you read in case 2014 PC04? Sure. Case number 2014 04, application planning and zoning for property located at 17707 Libby Road, Arnita Wilkes of Nita's Nest. Approval of a zoning variance to allow a type A daycare in a residential two-family zoning district. Not a permitted use. And planning approval for a three-year conditional use permit to operate a type A daycare until 10 p.m. in a residential two-family, residential single-family medium density district. Uh, section 1262.12, 1262.13, 1274.02. Twelve ninety-eight point two two, twelve ninety-eight point two eight. This is 
Wilkes, are you we're seeking your conditional use permit. Conditional use permit, and you needed a rental inspection. Yes. Did you have the results of your rental inspection? Yes. Is this a copy? No. business not to exceed 12 children Monday through Saturday from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. in a residential two-family district uh, subject to the approval of the engineer fire and building department and finance department and we do have the inspection report required on record and we will get that from the building department but the building commissioner has indicated she's in compliance everybody second Arnold? Yes. Deacon Yeshi? No. Austinson? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Weber? Yes. Foundation and floor of the garage on the property. 
zoned in a residential single family medium density district. Code sections 1262.03 D1, chapter 1490, 1490.08, and 302 point three point two. Mr. Schmidt here? Yes. Okay, you want to state your name? And My name is Matthew address? Schmidt. I'm the owner of the property 14660 Pease Road, Maple Heights, Ohio. Okay. Uh, you're asking for us to appeal the decision of the building official? Yes, I am. Okay. Would you like to speak? Sure. Um, on March 28, 2014, a rental special was performed on this house along with a couple of minor items that needed correction, the garage floor was noted as needing to be replaced. Um, I explained this was an existing condition that had passed two prior inspections. I was told it was the policy of the new inspection service that any cracked garage floors and foundations had to be replaced. When I purchased the property, I was given the inspection report by the city and the garage floor was not listed. Because of my experience working in homes in Maple Heights, and confirmed by the building department at the time, I know I needed to caulk all the cracks, which I did and can be seen in these pictures. Which we have. Which we have? Okay, thank you. All right. I'll take those. Just Uh, in 2011, the property was again inspected when I had changed the tenants. The floor was looked at and seeing the caulk was still in place and nothing was nothing was mentioned on the report. I worked on over 40 homes in Maple Heights and would estimate that over 90% of the freestanding garages have cracked floors similar to this one. This is not a structural or dangerous condition and unless there is evidence that the cracks are causing separation in the concrete or areas of becoming misaligned, the method of caulking the cracks to prevent moisture intrusion should be acceptable. When I purchased the property, my investment amount was based on the budget, which was set on the repairs needed from the city and the repairs that I felt brought the property up to a level I would be proud to call a landlord. The garage floor was never mentioned. Now, because of changes in the building department personnel, or methods of inspecting properties, I am being told I need to invest six or seven thousand dollars to correct an issue that causes no risk to the, the structure itself and adds no value to the property by doing the replacement of it. I think it's unfair to assess homeowners that uh, don't have any recourse in this, that these conditions were acceptable before, especially when a property was purchased and now they're not acceptable when nothing has changed on this property in the six years that I've owned it. These pictures aren't the same ones that you submitted earlier. I don't believe so. These are different. My computer crashed. Okay, then, are... then we need to let everyone look at okay. these pictures. Yes. I think these might be closer up pictures of. These are since they're different pictures. Uh, all right. Well, we'll ask. Um, we heard your explanation. We'll ask uh, each member if they have comments or questions. Mr. Weber, is this house still for sale, or are you ready? Uh, I'm ready. It, it, it's on and off the market, depending on who's looking at it or the conditions. If you were to sell it, you'd have to replace it, wouldn't you? Under the old system, it would not have had to be replaced because it was acceptable at that time. Now I would have to, under the new guidelines. So 2011 was your last inspection? Yes, it was when, uh, when renters had changed. Yeah, that was three years ago, though. A lot of things can happen in three years. Correct. The caulking that's shown in all these pictures is from when I originally purchased the property in 2008. So 
So in the six years that I've owned the property, there has been no movement of the curbs, as can be seen in the pictures, there's no misalignment of the concrete curbs that the structure sits on. So is your argument today, is your argument that when you purchased, really purchased the property, they didn't ask you to replace the floor, or is your argument today is what you did six years ago had to change? Uh, it's actually multiple. My argument is multiple fold. One, the structure itself is still sound. Nothing has moved since six years ago when I purchased the property. Um, the condition of it now is still sound as it was six years ago. Um, and the third part of my argument is that I think it's unfair for the city to change the guidelines of what is expected of a piece of property midstream and cost homeowners money. Especially when it's not a structural defect. I, I saw the pictures, I didn't go into the I got a question for you, but the rules, as you say, the rules changed, but things do change. The building code does change, and so that doesn't mean that you're exempt from not complying within the code as, as things have changed. So um, the fact that, it, in my mind at least, the fact that it was not cited in an initial inspection or something like this, or some previous rental inspection, doesn't mean that the problem still doesn't exist. If it doesn't, if the city regulations in the planning and building code of the city say that it has to be free from from cracks and, and the cracks in the foundation are telling me those have to be fixed. I'm not sure, but if, if, the, if it is cracked, then the code okay. says and it has to numerous be other properties that I've worked on for other homeowners in the city and other properties that I own. The policy has always been if you have a crack, you caulk it to prevent moisture intrusion, which is what forces the concrete slab apart in the winter. Or it's in there, it freezes, pushes it apart. But is that also if the, if the crack is cracking into the foundation itself, where your pore is deeper, and it's cracking into that, which I saw in your pictures, mm -hmm. even though you feel, filled it with caulk, and that's not going to eliminate the crack in the foundation because there is a crack all the way through the Correct. foundation. Correct, there is a crack all the way and through so the foundation. And so at the end of the day, if that's what the building department comes out and says, it says that you're, I mean, I'm not an engineer. I guarantee if any engineer look at that and said it's a crack foundation, it's something that if the code has changed to replace that slab, or if not, to get it up to their standards, then that's what has to be done. I, I, I just don't see a lot of wiggle room to override something that's pretty much blatant right there in your pictures. My question would be also, I'm sorry. Yeah. Six years ago, did they ask you to repair this and you repaired it with the call? No, six years ago, this did not appear in the report, but from my experience working on other homes in Maple Heights, I knew and confirmed with the building department at that time that this is what they required of cracks and foundations or cracks and garage floors was to caulk them with the, it's a, uh, what's the name of the It's a, it's a, silica, it's a rubber, rubber silica, yeah. It's, it's a rubber, it's like a silica. exactly. And I guess what I'm trying to get to is, when they came out six years ago, mm -hmm. they looked at this garage floor and said, hey, you meet the requirement or they passed it. Mm -hmm. And six years later, are you saying that floor is in similar condition? It's exactly, exactly the same condition. This this is a situation that existed six years ago. It's been through two inspections, and nothing has changed. So I understand building codes change. I've been in construction 27 years, and I deal with building code changes. But there's also such a thing as being grandfathered in that if something has already existed and doesn't cause a problem structurally or danger to individuals that your grandfather did with that condition. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, why were you late on filing your appeal? Uh, I filed the appeal three months ago. Late? Right. Why? I didn't realize there was a deadline to file the appeal. And so your excuse to, because technically once it's late, we're not as a board not even allowed to hear the case. So. 
that, that's out of our purview. That's council. You know, they made the law. It is what it is. If you don't appeal within 10 days of the decision, we have no power to act as a board to override our building commission. That's how I read it. It's pretty simple. And that saying I didn't know is not an excuse for not filing that time. No, that's, you can look, refer to section 2013.68E section E5, or E3, sorry. Can't read my own name. 2013.68E5. Okay. I got all our questions here. Um, then I'd like to then make a motion for case 2014 PZ07 to an appeal of the decision of the chief building official to replace and repair the foundation and floor of the garage on the property in 14660 Pease Road in the city of Maine. Second. Can you call the roll, please? Sure. Arnold. No. Deacon Yeshi. No. Astinson. No. Shannon. Yes. Weber. No. So your your appeal looks okay. Thank you. Yes, I would. <coughs> your appeal's been denied, and you have the, you have the right, I think, to appeal to council. No, they do not. No, they do not. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the council, please. Okay. Nine application planning and zoning for property located at 14520 Cordon Avenue. Applicant Robert Mingan, property owner, approval of a zoning variance to allow a carport incidental to an accessory permitted use in the rear yard of a corner lot property in a residential single family medium density zoning district. Zoned residential single family medium density sections 1261.18. 1272.02A, 1272.03H. Is Mr. Mankin? Sorry, I butchered your name. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. For the record, can you change that G to a C? I can. I have a habit of putting a tail on my C sometimes. Ah, Menson. I've had a few credit cards there. <laughs> the G to yeah, a C. That M-E-N-C-I-N. M-E-N-C-I-N. Do you want to state your address while you're there, for the record? Uh, it's 14520 Cordon A. <coughs> okay. You want to put a B carport, so you want to tell us a little bit about what you plan, what you'd like to do? Yeah, uh, we looked into uh, replacing the garage, which is a single car garage slanted roof. <laughs> Uh, we were looking into a two and a half car garage. Uh, I don't know what kind of pictures you have there. I have other pictures of the property. If I put a two and a half car garage up, I don't have too much of a backyard left. And we like to have barbecues and family outings in our yard and that. And uh, we thought the carport might be the way to go. About three years ago, I had that pull off put in there and uh, the carport would be an open carport, no sides, and it would be about nine by 13. Um, construction would be 12 gauge steel roof and galvanized steel two and a half inch uh, square. 
I don't know if you'd like to see any other pictures. Um, 
what do you mean? What do you need a permit? Oh, he needs a permit. So then during the process, you'd have to get an inspection by the building department. Did you, uh, do you want a new construction drawing on this? Or? Yeah, we don't, we, we never submitted that yet. Just your but Just the stuff. anchor? Yeah, I want, I want a drawing and all this new, the one you're getting. Mm -hmm. that and how it's going to be anchored to the existing slab. Oh. Gives you information I would then make a motion for the approval of a zoning variance to allow a carport incidental to an accessory permitted use in the rear yard of a corner lot property in a residential single family medium zoning district located at 14520 Corridon Avenue in the city of Maple Heights subject to the approval of the city engineer, the city fire department, and the city building department. Second. Second. Sure. Arnold. Yes. Deacon Yoshi. Yes. Austinson. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Weber. Yes. Uh, so we don't have any issues with that. 
Jose Rudolph, and a lot of people that are signed by I think he's talking about security inside. Yeah, just act actually inside. What do you mean by inside? Well, um, I mean, I'm sure I'm more going to this. It's a different environment, yeah. a different area. But if you think about here, maybe the high school, that, that was something that was just brought up. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, it's not. Oh, one of the things that um, I made. Do you need yeah, to stand up and your name, state your name, please, for the record? Oh, my name is uh, Mohammed. Same last name. Uh, so one of the same address as well. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that Papa John's actually suggests for security, they actually uh, after 9 p.m. to have the door closed and basically allow customers as they come in instead of keeping the door open for security reasons. Uh, as far as you know, security goes uh, inside the store, to hire like a security guard or anything. We never had any issues in the past to kind of you know think you know think about these thoughts, but hopefully it'll never happen, so we never have to go through through that. But it's always you know always gonna be a plan B. You know we'll see how things gonna go once the store opens and get on the operates. Would you be opposed to putting a camera outside? Oh, oh that's actually a question. Um, most of the morning for cameras. I'm actually not for cameras in my normal world. Store. Now with both these locations that I have, it's going to be hard for me just to focus at one store location. So having camera systems, I can be able to watch both stores with my manager's Well, I'm looking, yeah, you need to watch your operation, but I'm looking at the thing that, that concerns me about your location, and it's it's a great location, don't get me wrong, but behind you are woods. Yes, sir. And somebody coming to pick up a pizza that says carry out, and so they get their, get in their car, along the side of the building, you're out of your sight line. And somebody could take them out, rob them, whatever, and run. They got a the clear escape path right through the woods into the behind you. So there's, just because of that, where you are there, is there any plan to put something outside? So yeah. that you, so that number one, there's a recording of what took yeah. place, and number two, that your people on the inside of the store can watch your customers on the outside of the store to the best that they can. That, is a, that there's a monitor there, they can see what's happening. If you see people hanging around on the outside, then you need to send somebody out there and tell them to quit hanging around. You know, that's, a, that's a great point. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I actually haven't thought about that too much. Um, that's a good point. Yeah, I can definitely put cameras in the back, that makes sense. But, you know, the, the parking lot, now, I don't know if you've seen what they've done, they, there used to be a White House there. So I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't allow any of my my you know, customers to park all the way in the rear, it doesn't really make sense. Um, so the parking would be right in front of the door. Um, driver, same thing. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, it's too far to walk for them to take their pizzas all the way in the back and, and deliver the pizzas. That was my other question. You're, according to the plan we have in front of us, in front of the door, there's handicap spaces. There's one, one regular parking space and the other's a handicap. So, um, you, you said you don't want your customers to go around the side of the building, they're going to have to. No, no, I mean, there's a park in that they used to be a white house right next to the I know, we're kind of yeah. right nearby. Are you talking about the side of the building? Because we have talking about the side where the new parking lot was yeah. put in. Oh, okay. Um, that's out of your sight line if you're on the side. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, most likely we're going to have to use put cameras on that side. I thought you were talking about towards the back because there's literally. You know, I don't know that people would be going back there, but they certainly would be parking in that side lot to pick up. Yes, sir. Oh, no, of course. Yes. Of course, yes, sir. If I may. Um, I think uh, proper security can be solved simply here. Um, these are not full construction drawings; they're just conceptual for now. I think when you uh, when you uh, submit your full construction of drawings, uh, some you know metal headlight um, security lights on the side and back of the building to light up that parking lot. Oh, and that side is a real well brighter lights, so it'll be a if you bright the light that side of that building in the back. On the side of the back. So that, that would be uh, that'd be a reasonably uh, inexpensive, you know, uh, two two hundred fifty watt middle LA fixtures would light up the parking lot. That would be a what the city, you know, what yeah, 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 yeah. 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 would help them save some more issues. What's required for a handicap parking space? It got two. That's more. Oh, just it's just, just a carry out. Yeah, it's just carry out. Perfect. Delivery people from the people. So your delivery, your you going to offer delivery. For this, where your driver is going to operate from? So in North Wilton, for example, we have limited parking spots. So we're usually, you know, 
But with a store, you know, you're usually constantly busy, you know, in and out. So we have them park, you know, kind of with the customer area park, and they come in, they grab pizzas and they're out. And they're not, they're not actually sitting there for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, if that's the case, I'll have to park around the back. Um, but in our situation, our, our, our parking lot is so big now, where if it was a situation, we would have them parking on the side. So they can't park in those handicapped spaces in no, the front. Now, those are for handicapped guests. So, yes, so you've got one space in the front. I'm talking about on the side of the building. So that's where you're going to locate most, your most yes, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, the law director asked us to make your permit contingent upon the signed release. So we'll be putting that in the motion that you need to present to the legal department, the law department of the city and sign these. Oh, to, the building. Building. to the building. To the building. building. Okay, then it goes to the building department. You need to have a, after a, the condition of them issuing your permit would be you have to have a sign. This lease that you gave us has to be signed. No problem. Sorry. No, that was the only thing oh, okay. is to make sure that he understood we the lease that you provided was an unsigned lease. Oh, really? Yes. So if you've signed a lease already, yeah, we can we can you provide the signed lease? <laughs> A copy of that. The one that you provided is blank. So if we could get a copy of the signed lease for the file to show that you're the actual tenant for that location, not just somebody off the street going, "Hey." <laughs> okay. That's one of our. That's going to be one of the issues. We need to make you an official tenant. There. No. No. That was my only thing. When, um, when you get deliveries, merchandise brought to the store, uh, did you look at I don't think you can have your delivery, like your food service trucks. They can't, I don't think they can park on the street. No, I'm going to have them go to the parking lot in the back. Yeah. Yes, I don't know if you've seen the back. It's so big. It's paint back here. It's been back here. Yeah. Yeah. back here. Yeah. 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 So they have to they can, they can live. Oh, I mean, I, you know, it's back. Because your point, I mean, some of the questions they used to run off the my Royalton store, these guys go, you know, to the state of New York. They say these stores are smaller than, you know, so they, I mean, I hope they know. But I mean, most likely I'm going to have to go in the back and do so much. And we have a ramp actually going to the back door so they can okay. just bring the food yeah. on right there. They don't even have to go to the front. Yeah, they don't even have to go to the front. front. They can't park in the front. Yeah, oh no, for the street. Yeah. All right, then I make a motion for planning approval for a conditional use permit. Yes. For a conditional use permit to operate a fast food restaurant in a neighborhood commercial district located at 5328 Warrensville Center Road in the city of Maple Heights, subject to security lights on the side and back of building and a signed lease is required, subject to the city engineer, fire department, and building department approval. I'll second. Okay. All roll, please. Sure. Arnold. Yes. Hagen Yeshi. Yes. Asinson. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Weber. Yes. So you need to work with the building department. You need to sign this paper over and then be in touch with the building department. Yeah. Well, there's a gentleman from the building department sitting right in front of you, so make sure you get to give us information. Okay. Okay. And so having no further business, we will adjourn at 7 17. Thank you.